teaching us the visions of what God wants to teach before the time of the end and the marriage supper of the Lamb and the restoration of the human race to the position that God wants us to be in. Ken Klein, who has KenKleinProductions.com, movie maker, author. Ken, uh, let's continue with your amazing discussions that will bring people to the vision of what God wants to see in the near future and what God's intention is for the human race. Go ahead. Well, one thing uh, you might want to make a note here, and that is it's a .net, not a .com. Oh, dot .com, dot .net, uh, sorry, dot .net, yeah. yeah. I, I Ken Productions dot .net, yeah. Frustrated. Good. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. I'll, I'll make sure somebody, that link's up there. So, <clears throat> Ken Productions dot .net. And wanted <clears throat> to charge me like thousands of dollars to buy oh, it. Oh, really? And I just, ah, yeah, okay. But that's okay. Well, .net, Ken Klein yeah, Productions yeah. Dot .net, you'll find yeah, it. Yeah, I double check it always anyway before the show ends, and then I put the right link up. KenKleinProductions.net. Go ahead. Please continue. Well, I guess what's on my mind is uh, the the reality of what we're experiencing <clears throat> on the earth is quite a, uh, the Bible calls it slipsis, or, or it, it's a, it's a, um, it, it's a pressure that's coming over the world like we've never seen before. It, it, it really is the last stages of the Great Tribulation. Now, people think that the Tribulation, most people think, thanks to uh, uh, probably the late great planet Earth, Hal Lindsey's book back in the 60s and early 70s, uh, created a kind of a lens that most people look through to try to understand the times in which we live, but it's flawed, and uh, it, it's flawed because it's based upon a miscalculation of the revelation in Daniel 9, right. 9, 24 through 27, right. which has been uh, uh, a, tr- a terrible tragedy for God's people because it's a heresy, even though I would be called a heretic for calling it a heresy. Right. Uh, but heresy simply means an opinion about what the Scripture is saying, and I'm sure uh, down the road we'll have a chance to to do a lengthy discussion about Daniel 9, 24 through 27. But nonetheless, the Great Tribulation began uh, just as Jesus said it would after the destruction of the temple, which was in 70 A.D. Then shall come a tribulation, it says, that the world has never seen. And that, of course, affected my uh, my uh, patriarchy, which is Jewish. Uh, many of my family were killed by Hitler in the Second World War and the Holocaust, right. and the Jews uh, were driven out of Jerusalem in 70 into what is called the Wilderness of the Gentiles, which is the whole right. world. And uh, so it ha- it's been that way up until 1948. Actually, they started coming back at the turn of the century, but not till 1948 was uh, Israel restored as a name right. of the land. So... Uh, We've we've been in a in a time period of the wanderings in the wilderness of the Gentiles, as far as the Jews are concerned, and there's been no temple, and yet uh, of course uh, when you go to Israel today, even Netanyahu would say the most holy site in Israel is the Wailing Wall because they believe the Jews believe that that's the last vestige of the temple confines, but it's not. It's not uh, at all, no, yeah, yeah. No, not at all, and yet uh, how they've dressed that place up and how much it is uh, kept as a, as, a, as a focal point for prayer for the Jews. And um, I've been in conf- conflicts there with Jews when they uh, query oh, yeah. me about my, who I am and what I'm doing there. They but even stick prayers on the cracks of the wall, which is ridiculous. Yeah, they've been right. doing that for... Yeah. They used to pray from the Mount of Olivet to the... Uh, east to west. Now they pray west to east. That's only been the last 300 years since Rabbi Luria uh, claimed that he was uh, privy to where the real remnant of the uh, temple was, but he was a mystic that was misguided by whatever forces misled him. But ever since him, uh, the Jews have met at the Wailing Wall to pray. But now uh, that has gone on for 300 years, and there's no uh, progress really made in terms of the, of another temple, which is what they're shooting for. But even if they do build another temple, which will probably be built right next to the Dome of the Rock, it's something that God won't bless or regard. 
even though they're pressing hard for their way because they want to see a uh, temple built because they believe that uh, the, the glory of the Lord, the Shekinah glory, which was a cloud, will return. But it left, the, the, the glory cloud of, of God left uh, at the destruction of the first temple, and it, and, and it departed, according to the book of Ezekiel, and went to the Mount of Olivet, uh, which was pretty interesting because that is exactly where the glory would fall because that's where Jesus was killed. He was killed on the Mount of Olivet. People think, well, no, he was killed at the Garden Tomb, or if you're a Greek Orthodox, you think at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But neither of those places is correct. Jesus was killed on the Mount of Olivet, exactly where the glory uh, uh, cloud lifted and went when it lifted off the temple. The temple during the time of Ezekiel was Solomon's temple. And so they think, the Jews think, that... uh, if they rebuild the temple, uh, the presence of the Lord will come back into the temple, and that will uh, bring about world peace. So they're, they're on a mission, in a sense, to rebuild their temple, and they'll erroneously build it most likely on the Temple Mount. Now, the reason I'm saying all that is because when the temple was destroyed, excuse me, when, when Jesus was killed on the Mount of Olivet, uh, there was an earthquake. And the centurion that was at the feet of Jesus saw the earthquake that it would, uh, that it, it cracked the lintel of that that held up the uh, the curtain, the veil over the temple, which which was about sixty to seventy feet high. I mean, he could see it from uh, as far away as he was, which which was about uh, half a mile uh, from where the temple was. But the fact of the matter is, he he could see into the temple, which proves. That were the exact location of where Jesus died, based upon the centurion being able to see the, the temple tear, the temple veil tear. Now, why I'm bringing that up is because the tearing of the temple of the, uh, veil, which and there were two of them. There was one on the outside of the temple that uh, 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 separated the king's the the priest location for what they did from the in, inward parts of the of the temple, which there were two apartments in there. One was the holy of holies. The other was the holy place, and that veil separated uh, the the uh, priest court from the interior of the temple, and that signified something very significant uh, to the world. And that was that now the the priesthood is changing. The priest would all all people would be able to go into the temple now, and so there's a change of a priesthood because of the death of Jesus, and. So uh, the ordination of God now isn't by letters from men, it's not by institutions, it's not by uh, uh, any, any kind of process of, of indoctrination, it's by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Right. The Spirit of God then would come upon all those that believe in the death of Christ mm-hmm. and His blood, which would be the atonement, which would allow for the bringing upon a human being person, the anointing or the Christine, anointing means Christ, of the Holy Spirit, which means it's a different priesthood than the Levitical priesthood, which was a priesthood that was bestowed by uh, uh, ordination by priests. So it's not by letters. Paul would often write, an apostle sent not by uh, a man, not by letters of men, but by God. Apostelo, apo means from, and stelo means to send. So sent from God. And so this is a different kind of a minister than the world seen before. And right. Jesus articulated what the temple of God would be. It would be himself, and then those who come under his blood covenant would be the temple of God. So the Jews wanting to restore and rebuild the temple violates the whole reality of the tearing of the veil, which necessitates or uh, heralds a whole new priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, which that is our priesthood. We, we're, we're, the, we're co-joined with Jesus in that priesthood and gives us a tremendous, tremendous audience with the everlasting Father so we can actually go before God and his, and his heavenly tabernacle, which Jesus even cleansed by his own blood when he went through the heavens, right. uh, and have audience with God Almighty. So is having an audience with the President of the United States a big deal? Well, yeah, I guess you could say so. But having an audience with the Creator is a lot bigger deal than that. So 
this is this is what we have available to us now as priests. So we shouldn't be so much concerned uh, with the outer court. Uh, there's an right. outer court. There's an inner court, which is the priest domain, and there was the holy of holies. So the outer court, it says in Revelation 11, is uh, not to be measured because it would, it's given unto the Gentiles to trample down. All you have to do to see the trampling down of the outer court, which is the whole world, is watch the news. Every night you can watch the trampling down of the outer court. It's very frustrating and aggravating. Right. But, but when you look at the politics of the world, you're looking at the outer court and the trampling right. down of it by the uncircumcised, or the, un, right. the Gentiles, that they call Gentiles. Uh, they called the uncircumcised uh, of that day uh, the Gentiles, but uncircumcised was, of course, a physical uh, uh, cutting away of the foreskin uh, of a man's genitals. But the, the, the real circumcision today is of the heart. Right. So because, because Jesus died and because he went through his, the veil of his flesh into the heavenlies, uh, now our hearts can receive from God uh, the anointing. And we can see differently than men. We're, we're not just mere men now. We, we are the sons of God, and we have a we have a audience with the Father. And so we're we're of a different priesthood than the the the, the earthly priesthood that we see today in denominations right. and in sects and and uh, religious orders and so forth. So that's that's what is available to us as the priest. Now, I want to say something here, Bill, if I may, Dr. Bill. Sure, go ahead. Uh, one of the great stories, and I had mentioned this to you before we decided to do the program today, and I appreciate you having me on. Uh, there's a story that I once uh, uh, brought up to the pastor of our church. Now, the guy was a great man of God, a great pastor. But everybody gets indoctrinated, and everybody has certain mind circuitries that are uh, you know, uh, locked up and, and not open to what God wants to say and do. And I right. he preached a sermon once on a portion of Scripture. I don't have the exact uh, Scripture reference, but it had to do with when the Ark of the Covenant, which represented and contained the very presence of the Lord, uh, was captured by the Philistines. And uh, But it was recovered. It was recovered, and, and the Philistines... Uh, I wanted to get this away from them because it was causing cancers and boils and all kinds of maladies upon the people, and they realized they shouldn't be having this thing. It belonged to God and God's people. So they put it on an ox cart, and they and they uh, 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 guided the oxen back towards the camp of the Israelites. Well, when, when the ox cart was coming into town, into Jerusalem, uh, it hit a chuck hole, and, and, and the... Uh, Ark of the Covenant began to tip over and, and, and look like it was going to crash and fall on the ground. Well, there was a man walking next to the ark, and he was worried that it was going to fall and break into pieces. So he put his hands up and steadied the ark so that it wouldn't fall off the ark, uh, fall off the cart, and he was immediately struck down by God. And David right. was really upset about it because, you know, it looked like he was doing a nice thing, a good thing. I mean, the good intentions for certain. And uh, But in the steadying of the ark, it caused this death, his own death. And David couldn't figure out what was wrong. But after a period of time, he did figure it out. And so when they got the ark going again with the Ark of the Covenant on the, ark, on the cart, uh, David was right next to the ark, but this time... He was wearing the vestiture of the priest, the priest. Right. And he figured out that this guy was irreverent because he touched something holy that yeah. he wasn't entitled to touch. He wasn't supposed to touch it. This could only be handled by the priest. Now, we as priests uh, make a similar uh, mistake like Uzzah did when we see things out of balance and immediately we put our hands to that thing which is out of balance and what do you know what do we do we create death this is called self-righteousness yeah this exactly is what happens when people yeah, in other words self-intentions out of not the will of god is the definition of evil is what you're saying 
have difficulty taking supplements? Are you searching for a high-quality, complete nutritional drink that your whole family will love? Nutramedical's Life Support has arrived. All of your daily nutritional requirements in one quick, delicious drink. Dr. Bill Deagle's Life Support is a proprietary blend of vegan protein, activated vitamins, essential minerals, amino acids, probiotics, green tea, digestive enzymes, anti-inflammatories, cancer prevention, detoxification, and much more. Your body will high-five you for this one. Life Support is the best complete nutritious meal replacement on the market. Whether you are an elite athlete, have post-operative challenges, chronic illness, elderly, or a family that just wants a quick, delicious drink, try Dr. Bill Deagle's Life Support for optimized nutrition in one great-tasting smoothie. Just add cold water, almond milk, fruit, or anything else you like. Nutramedical's Life Support. Try our great-tasting chocolate or vanilla today. Call 888-212-8871 or visit us online at Nutramedical.com. Nutramedical.com for the whole family. Legacy Emergency Foods is the top recommendation from Dr. Bell Deagle for the lowest oxygen concentration, the largest entrees, the highest amount of protein, the most varied entrees as well, and the longest food storage life. Nothing like Legacy Emergency Foods, and if you place a regular monthly order, you get 20% off and free shipping. Do get emergency foods for your supply for preparation and get it from Legacy Foods. Contact Dr. Bill Deagle for the link at Nutramedical.com. Go to the Shop by Products link and drop down message at Nutramedical.com and then place your orders for regular emergency food for yourself and your family. Nothing like emergency food if the power goes out and you can't go to grocery stores or if there's an emergency or a national crisis. So Nutramedical.com, top recommendation, Legacy Foods. Nutramedical.com, go to the Shop by Products and drop down menu and stay well with Nutramedical every day of your life. Lumen Photon Therapy, infrared light, far and near infrared is extremely important for pain control, simulation of nitric oxide, improved perfusion, and stem cell activation and reduction of cytokines. Dr. Bill uses it for pain control, for regeneration techniques, for organ regeneration, and for stimulation of your stem cell activity. Uh, this amazing uh, Lumen Photon Therapy this year will probably have an additional device with frequency therapy during the on phase of the lights. To obtain a Lumen Photon machine, contact Dr. Bill at Nutramedical.com, 888-212-8871. He'll prescribe it with you, providing nutraceuticals to help with your regeneration, healing, and pain control. Nothing like the Lumen Photon Therapy for uh, easy therapy for your eyes, your pain, your joints, regeneration of organs, detoxification of the body. Get a Lumen Photon machine from Dr. Bill Deagle, Nutramedical.com, 888-212-8871. To stay well with Nutramedical. The Sonic Life Machine is one of the most amazing therapies that Dr. Bell provides. It is the best sine wave exercise machine on the planet, doing whole body vibration, opening up the muscle to reduce insulin resistance, improve perfusion, release stem cell therapies throughout the body, and epigenetically stimulate the body to release DNA activated. Uh, the epigenetic therapy with the uh, sine wave curve of frequencies given for atomic resonance by Linus Pauling for minerals and amino acids stimulates the production of messenger RNA to correct structural protein enzyme deficiency for almost every illness. There's nothing like the sine wave therapy for improving body healing for exercise, but also the epigenetic treatments Dr. Bell can provide can help neutralize frequencies for disease states and illness. Get a Sonic Life machine through Dr. Bill Deagle at Nutramedical.com. Contact us at Nutramedical.com, 888-212-8871, or go to the website Nutramedical and give us a contact. Dr. Bill is available to help you get well with Nutramedical. Need a powerful ally to fight daily bugs and serious pathogens? Allison Med is the powerful universal pathogen killer's latest advance of German-sourced Allison, enzymatically stabilized to clear the body of bacteria, fungi, mycobacteria, and parasites. It penetrates body biofilms and is non-toxic to tissues. Pathogen resistance cannot develop for long-term body-optimized wellness. Clear stealth pathogens that promote autoimmune disease, cancer, and vascular inflammation and plaque and promote healing of tissues. Now pathogen-free. With 200 milligrams more power than prior Alamed, you can't get a more powerful ally to fight daily bugs and serious pathogens. Give your body what it needs. Allison Med. Order Dr. Bill Deagle's Nutridine at 888-212-8871 or Nutramedical.com. That's 1-888-212-8871 or Nutramedical.com. And listen to the Nutramedical Report on the Genesis Radio Network with open lines every weekday. Nutramedical.com, bringing nutrition and medicine together. And we're 
We're coming back with Ken Klein. Ken, um, I, I, I tried to summarize at the end of the last talk, and I guess what you're saying is good intentions are the pathway to doing evil. Uh, and you have to know that we have they to can't, give some they, they certainly can't. They certainly can be. I mean, a lot of times uh, God's people try to rescue uh, people that they feel uh, empathy for when God's trying to bring them to an end for themselves. And so they just, by doing good, they prolong the discipline that God's dealing with the person about, and uh, they never come to an end where they give up and let go and let God have reign in their life. So often, out of good intentions, we interrupt what God's discipline is about. And when it comes to this whole thing about sticking out the arm of the flesh and creating death, that's right. exactly what the Jews are doing and trying to establish... Uh, another temple. They, they mean well. Well, for sure. apparently, according it seems to like uh, a Carl, thing to do, but they're doing the same. They're making the same sin that Uzzah committed when he steadied the ark. Yeah, we we uh, we we're going to have on uh, back on the program Carl Gallops. He had a delay there because of a family issue, but he said the same thing as you. Basically, a tiny minority of Jews and a lot of evangelical Christians are pushing for building a temple. They have all the money to build many temples. And uh, it, by definition, by the way you've said it, is this arm of flesh. Please continue. That's what it is. And now, right. in my city, there's a guy that has a church of about a thousand people. In fact, I got another phone call from a guy today, a good friend, uh, who's got his own network, and I'll introduce you to him when he gets funded. But uh, right, uh, a church in Houston, and he's at fifteen thousand people, and they have all the creature comforts, you know, the lattes, the cafes, the, the, the pastries, and uh, oh, yeah. You know this easy believism, when uh, which goes out a wrong message that God wants you to have a Disneyland mentality towards His kingdom, and it's not like that. No, and, in and fact, so actually being a this, real believer is like being Delta Force. It's not funny. Being a believer and standing it, it, up for the truth and God's righteousness is not easy, is it? No, I mean it's a walk of faith and it's a walk of discipline, and right. the discipline is what we don't want. It, right. The Bible says if we're without discipline, we're bastards, and people don't like uh, discipline. They don't. They, who does? It, you know, well, they, they, they want to have their sense. latte and they want to shake hands with somebody of a different skin color. Want to donate a few dollars to the homeless or people that have other issues. They want to have a good feeling, and they want to sing songs and walk away, and figure, hey, I've been uh, blessed, and uh, we're cool. And uh, they go off and still continue sitting or doing their own will. Yeah, and, and that's the problem God has with us. He's got to break us of the flesh. And, right. and the clearest example is when we are reactionary and uh, we want to correct people all the time and, and we want to uh, be the remedy, you know, for immediate remedy for people. So we're, doing, we're committing that kind of sin. And In other words, you're trying to point out what you're saying is we try to point out sin rather than bring him to the sinless one, which is God who is the only one who can take away sin. In other words, unless you have a relationship with God, your sin is not going to disappear by you trying to do good. In other words, what you're pointing out is you point out sin, they try to stop doing evil or, or sin, and that doesn't make them have a relationship with the sinless one, does it? No, and, and what happens, it prolongs the very presence of the Lord to come into his to Zion. Exactly. And in fact, it's like the 600-some rules that Jews have you know, in the Old Testament, you had to do them, and then if you did them, you're cool. Or modern Christians, or I call easy believism, that if you do a certain formula, then you're good to go. I mean, God likes you. In fact, even the Pope has made comments that even atheists that are nice people are going to get to heaven. It's like, ah, uh, da, no, that's not true. You have to have a relationship with God. He's the only one who can remove sin. We can't. And you have to have a relationship, and you have to shema here and do God's will for him to remove sin. And you trying to be good to get God to like you is the exact opposite of what God wants. He wants you to hear and do his will, and he removes the sin by making you have a relationship so you don't desire to do not his will. Right? Yes, and the, but the whole issue of relationship has to yeah. be looked at carefully. Now, when the yeah. priest, when, when, Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, he was responsible right. as a priest to go into the temple. He went through that veil, and he went into uh, 
the holy place. Now, the holy place is different than the holy of holies. There's two actual compartments in the temple, the holy place, and in the holy place was the altar of incense. And the altar of incense was a representation of the prayers of God's people. Right. And the prayers, uh, the altar of incense was lit up twice a day. And what they would do would be that they would carry in their fire pans, like the upside down of a trash can, the coals from the outer altar, which was the altar of burnt offerings. They'd take those coals inside the temple, and they would put those coals on the altar of incense. incense. It was about two foot high and about a foot square. Right. And then they put the incense on the burning coals, and the smoke would go up, and it was the sweet smell that represented the prayers of God's people. Now, I think we might have talked about this last time, but forgive me. Two yeah, I want you to repeat it. It's good to repeat it, though. Please continue. Uh, two of the priests, uh, the sons of Aaron, this lineage that was handed down, were very cavalier about their responsibility. And uh, so they took fire in their fire pans, but they put the uh, incense on the fire pans for fire, and immediately they were killed. And the reason for it was is that there was a certain protocol that they were to go through to offer up uh, this incense that uh, represented prayers and how God felt about prayers. That God killed them uh, instantly. Right. And, and that's kind of what the Scripture calls strange fire. And whenever we mix, uh, and, and it's because they were drinking. They went into the, they went into the tabernacle uh, uh, where the altar of incense was, and they were actually they were drunk, and they, oh so they weren't paying attention to their duties. There's a prayer group here in my city that it's called, uh, 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 how do they call it? It's a uh, beer and, and Bible. In other words, you come to this Bible study and have a beer while you're studying the scriptures. Now, that to me is out of line with <laughs> how we're to Yeah, feel obviously, it sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? it? This is mixing the world uh, 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 with, uh, with uh, this is the arm of the flesh. This is another kind of thing because there's somehow the, the life of the Spirit isn't released in those groups to where it's satisfying. So let's just add some beer and we'll socialize. To me, this is the same thing that the two priests did that were killed by the Lord. It's strange right. fire. And so much of that's going on where the compromise is going on with the church. And one of the people that I knew 30 years ago uh, started this movement called User-Friendly Seeker-Sensitive, which is destroys uh, the whole concept of, of, of having reverence towards God and approaching him properly as a priest. When Zechariah, who was the father of John the Baptist, had this duty as a priest, uh, he went into the temple to the temple and, and offered, you know, the incense on the altar of incense. And lo and behold, an angel appeared to him and said, I'm going to tell you something. Your wife is going to be with child, and uh, you're going to call his name John. Well, Zachariah could hardly believe it, and right. he went, he couldn't talk. But the point of it is that most of us that love God or want to love God or want to know God, uh, have this tremendous opportunity to be able to go into the very presence of the Lord in the heavenlies by, by faith and and to hear things from God that, that bring us uh, uh, a, a strength. It's almost like uh, this food, this hidden mana that you've mentioned that can sustain us and, and, right. and hold well, us and keep us. Yeah, and this people are available. starving spiritually, aren't they? That's why there's so much young suicide and drug addiction. Part of it is a hopelessness in the young people and in the churches nowadays that are populating not only America but worldwide, they're dead. Well, the, the, These are the dead church churches. Doesn't have the doesn't have the food. It doesn't have the, the no the, manna. The, this kind of prophetic food like uh, Elijah had when he ran from Jezebel. It sustained him for a month. This is exactly. what we need. And so, if we can have this kinds of experiences uh, like uh, John the Baptist's father had, where we're having angelic visitations and proclamations from the throne of God, uh, right. this is the kind of stuff that strengthens us, not easy believism. Exactly. In fact, it's mostly a lot of it's stories. In fact, what I did is this week, after a lot of prayer and talking to you, the Lord told me it was time for me to put together, rather than rewriting Clay and Iron and Abortion Armageddon, 
God wanted me to put these stories of God, how God interacts with us together on my on my special channel, besides the top secret and other information, to put these vignettes and stories together, because that's how God does it. He gives you images of events and things that happen, how God is the master, God is the father, God is the one who brings us into relationship and cleanses us. God is the one who speaks to us, but we have to enter humbly, just like you crawl like that through that, that narrow gate in order to get into, uh, you know, they talk about the, the, the camel crawling on its knees to get a narrow gate. Unless you approach God like a child, unless you go approach God humbly and ask for God's intentions, you can't really understand God. And you have to understand him in terms of visions, like which is the way you do it. That's why I'm going to sit, present these little vignette videos to try to help people understand how do you get a relationship. You know, a lot of people think if I do a certain amount of good works, everything's good. No. That's called easy believism. It's like trying to, to win God over by uh, dropping so many coins like in the, uh, in, the, in the exchange thing, like in the Catholic Church where they said when the coin drops in the, uh, in the, in the, in the coin thing, that the soul pops out of purgatory. I mean, this is the same kind of evil, isn't it? Is I, I think the real issue uh, that's being, I don't want to say ignored, just not understood, Right is that we 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 are a fallen race, right? And I'm not just fallen from Adam. We're we're fallen from the heavens. Right. We preexisted, and unless we understand our ancient anteriority, unless we get back to who we were, and now are in a prison situation in our bodies, and right. understand the duality of our being, then we're not going to be able to. Uh, see clearly you know that that's what jesus said they they came to him and they said uh, uh okay man we're going to kill you right now this is it he said well w for what good works are you going to kill me i mean i've healed people i've said not for anything good works you've done but because you said you're equal with god and he and jesus says to them isn't it written in your law and it cannot be broken have not i said you are elohim elohim it, it was the was the first time the first time we see the word Elohim in the Bible is in Genesis one, where it says, uh, "Let us." And God said, or Elohim said, "Let us make man in our likeness." So right. people think, "Well, no, we're made in the likeness of God." I went, "No, no, 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 no. We're made in the likeness of Elohim." And there's a difference between Elohim and Jehovah. Right. And, and when we begin to understand where we fell from. And we, right. we begin to see the magnitude of our redemption in Jesus and how God ha – there's no way back unless he comes here. God with us, man, that's it. There's no way back to where we came from unless we accept his conditions for redemption and salvation. So we begin to understand the magnitude of this deliverance, this salvation, this transformation possibility. Then we're more earnestly inclined to pursue God by faith. And I think that's the key, uh, rather than trying to be, I don't want to be mean to be critical of anybody. I'm not trying to be. Right, it's just like we don't see. Well, you want to show the right pathway. In. Yeah, You said this in the previous shows, which basically means if you don't approach it this way, you approach God like it's like a currency thing, like you could do so many good works and God will like you. No, no, God loves you already. He wants you to return to him on his terms and if you do, he'll wash away your sins and make you as white as snow. But you can't take away sin. Only God can take away sin. You can only sin against God. You can't sin against man or nature or anything else. And people don't get that. They don't realize you don't have to take and feel this horrible burden on you or so. I haven't done enough good works. I haven't done this and that. And people should realize it's not the good works you do. It's the good intentions you have that are intentions after you have a prayer, a relationship with the Creator God. And you start to accept him as your father and your master and the one who created you and the one who can bring you back into relationship because it's our destiny collectively for the human race to become the queen of the heavens. It's our destiny to be elevated back into the spiritual realm of the heavens, isn't it? Yeah, I think a lot of the problem is that the traditional theological grids don't allow for the idea of a pre-existence. I mean, with that last exactly. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Interesting stories. I'll tell you one on the break here that you might find funny. Are
Are you still looking for that one iodine that you can really trust? A medical doctor endorsed product that is backed by honest research and true integrative science. Then search no further. Go to NutraMedical.com for Dr. Bill Deagle's Nutriodine, proven time and time again to be the very best iodine available for you. Nutriodine is the only Tesla-activated monatomic plasma iodine in the world. It optimizes mitochondrial function and generation of new mitochondria from totally neutralizing the venom from a desert recluse spider bite in Southern California to eliminating malaria parasites reported by medical missionaries in Central India. Dr. Bill's Nutriodine is simply the most powerful healing formula there is. Nutriodine clears the body of all known pathogens, restores it to an alkaline state, and even even promote stem cell regeneration. Order Dr. Bill's new triadine today at 888 212 8871 or visit us online at nutramedical.com. Red Deer Velvet DR is an amazing new product with a patent to preserve 300 biomolecules and six hormones, same as fetal life, where you don't age at all. The state of fetal life allows the 300 biomolecules and six hormones produced by the placenta to be supportive of the uh, regeneration of tissues and organs with maximum apoptosis, uh, changing the tissue and organ structure of a fetus. That's why if fetal surgery is performed, there is no scar. Taking uh, two to three capsules twice a day with oncomycin, myco-D2, uh, provides an amazing support for regeneration of any tissue and organ in the body and even advanced stem cell therapy support treatment. Do uh, get Nutramedical's Red Deer Velvet DR from Dr. Bill Deagle at Nutramedical.com, N-U-T-R-I-Medical.com, 888-212-8871. Stay well and stay young with Nutramedical. Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Deagle, MD, A-A-E-M, A-C-A-M, A-4-M, of Nutramedical.com and a consultant providing email advice free on advanced protocols for your optimized wellness and advanced technologies to heal and regenerate you. You can contact us at NutraMedical.com, that's N-U-T-R-I-Medical.com, or 888-212-8871. You get free email starter protocols of our top medical-grade nutraceuticals, initial testing, and recommendations for your own primary doctor to do, as well as recommendations to give you an idea of a consultation and a full protocol to try to help you regenerate your tissues, heal naturally without the use of toxic polypharmacy. I can send test kits to you as well anywhere in the world and provide you recommendations to referral of specialty clinics worldwide. So contact me, Dr. Bill Deagle, at Nutramedical.com. That's N-U-T-R-I-Medical.com or 888-212-8871. At Nutramedical.com, we have the most amazing drinks with the best both feel, highest quality bionutrient uh, exposure to your body to heal and regenerate, and the uh, most powerful persistence of nutrients to heal your body dramatically. We have Ageless, which makes you age less, which repairs your DNA, extends your telomeres, etc., we have life support that detoxes phase two detox pathways, glucuronidation, sulfation, and methylation pathway support. We have glycemics that blocks the carbohydrate absorption and helps with diabetes or weight loss, and as well helps with people that are trying to build up muscle. Using things like our um, special formulas from Dr. Wolf called Mega Muscles between meals along with Sports Energy Light. We have the amazing Nutri Complete, the most complete red and re- greens drink in the world with the best mouth feel and flavor. You can often mix it too with Vitamin Mineral Mix, which is our fruit flavored mix power of vitamin minerals. Stay well with Nutramedical every day. I remember when, I remember, there we I go. Remember when I lost my mind. And welcome back. Um, we we're talking about different things on the break. Uh, now, uh, the only time I've been asked to speak at a church, and I, I do beg to, to, to speak in churches, and in fact, I could like to arrange arrangements where I can do multi site churches or auto videos where I could put you on and could put a thousand of churches in the video link to them. But the last time I spoke physically in church was Living Waters Fellowship outside Paul, after that I spoke in the Prophecy Club to 42 cities in Israel. And I asked God to give me a vision of what he wanted me to say. And he had me one thing he wanted me to say that was very, very important. He gave me a vision of, a, a, if you want to call it like a spiritual hospital, and there were waiting rooms. There were two waiting rooms. One waiting room, all the people had no matter whether they had a tumor fungating on the side of them or nothing, just under one fingernail, they all had a little piece of paper with, saved by the blood of Yeshua, Jesus. That's it. 
Nothing else. They didn't have any fancy document. They had a little piece of paper, a little document. And in the other waiting room, they had nothing. And what would happen is Jesus would come down like the surgeon, and he would come down with a OR gurney, and he would take the person that had the piece of paper, he'd bring them down to the upper room, and he'd cut off all the evil from them, and he'd replace them with his own body. He'd make them whole. And the people in the other room didn't have the paper after a while. They realized there's nobody from our waiting room is being taken down the hall and getting renewed by God. And when the last person was being taken from the waiting room, the floor disappeared and all of a sudden they started falling in the abyss. So what people need to understand, these people in both rooms look pretty well the same. There were some nice people, some ugly people, some pretty fancy people. But without the blood of Jesus, you got nothing. In other words, if you don't accept the blood of the internal sacrifice of God literally coming and dying on earth as a sacrifice to bring a relationship back, you don't have any entry point. It doesn't matter what good works you did or whatever in your life. Maybe you're a good person when you died and people like you, but you, you're not going to exist in the spirit realm after your body's gone. I like to use the analogy to make people laugh a little. I said, you know, uh, that <clears throat> when the body... that. Hell and heaven wait for when the body drops away. If you're God's person, you had a heavenly relationship, you just are in heaven already, in a sense. And when you don't have a relationship with God, you just drop into the abyss and you get annihilated in the lake of fire. I mean, people need to understand that. They need to understand the only thing that saves you is the blood of Jesus and the eternal sacrifice of God that says, you know, I'm going to rescue you if you accept me. And people don't understand that, do they? Uh, you know, it's a day. It's a. It's it's really a day by day understanding. Exactly. You have to keep returning to God too. We have it's to not be an easy renewed. Day. We we have yeah. to be renewed day by day because yeah. we will fall away. We 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 just we naturally yeah. drift away. Uh, yeah, and that's another thing uh, you know, that the churches we're, say: once saved, always saved. When I tell people, if I turn to do evil, one of the last things God said to me before He sent me as a little boy back from heaven. And he asked me after he showed me the annihilation and all the things coming on earth. And he said, now we're high above the earth, about 400 miles. And he said, now what do you want to do? And I really, and I, I said, I love you so much, God. I want to do what you want me to do, which is to go back and give a message to your people. He said, now if you fall away and do evil in my sight, I will annihilate you. And I said, I love you so much, God. I will go back in danger of losing my name in the book of life. And he said, not since your ancestor Moshe has anyone said to that to me. And for this reason, he cried, when you fall away, I will shake your ugly human carcass and I will make you a son again. And believe me, he did. And unless he crushed me and put me through what I call this, the, the burning realization of how evil you can become under circumstances, I didn't realize what it means to be saved by the blood of Jesus. I do now. Let me tell you. I understand that you cannot in any way, shape, or form, no matter how intelligent or wonderful you are or donate your money or billions of dollars, there's nothing you can do that can substitute for the relationship with God and his willingness to sanctify you. And people need to grasp that, don't they? I think, I think the, thing, the, the Lord is so remarkably wonderful that yeah. it's not even that he's mad. It, no, what, no, no. I think what... I think what frustrates the Lord is that when we fall away, He can't talk with us anymore. Exactly, he, you're, you're we, cut we, off. You're you're no longer you're, you're his. Cut, you're you you drift away, and you can no longer hear His voice. Exactly. And hearing His voice, it says today, if you hear His voice, not on Saturday, not on Sunday, not on Friday night. Today, yeah, if you hear His voice every day. So so today is uh, this day. Today is Monday. So today is hearing of the voice day, which is the Sabbath day. The every Sabbath day, is. day is we, it, it, every day is the Sabbath day if we hear his voice. Not every day we right. knock off and just uh, go to the saloon and have a beer. Yeah, yeah, every yeah. day we're called well, to hear his voice, and he wants to speak to us because in his speaking to us, in his ministry to us, it strengthens us and it fortifies us. So why, why do it we gives need us that? Because we live, it, we live it in a us. fallen world that's cursed. And, well, you and, mentioned this. You mentioned this before, though. He said, "When I return, will there be faith on earth?" He didn't talk about will there be nice people, will there be sinless people who try to do nice, good things. Will there be faith? He's the only one yeah, that can and, give us faith, right? Yeah, and 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 that's that's a rhetorical question that every person has to answer for themselves. 
right and and, uh, and and so we know that the 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 furnace is heating up we it's not hard to see oh yeah that the world's getting worse oh so we're we're so close to disaster you, now just look at the let's look at the, uh, the discussion between donald trump and the democrats i mean every one of the democrats agrees to late-term abortion, which even 93% of abortionists in the first trimester wouldn't do. They agree with the green agenda, which is plain, demonically energized evil. They believe in a form of social communism, which is godless. I mean, people have to understand just how vile the world is becoming and how they are so bold now. They'll say it to your face and then how dare you disagree with them because they present it like it's a religion. And if you don't agree, you're apostate. That's how nuts it is, isn't it? We're either being transformed by the glory of God through the continual uh, understanding of the washing of regeneration, which is the blood of Christ. Right. We're either being transformed daily, or we're being conformed. We're either conforming to the world, or we're either or we're being transformed by our faith. And it's one or the other. There's no middle ground here. This, exactly. This is, a, this is deadly serious, yeah. and therefore. If if we're, if we're going to be transformed, we've got to be hearing the voice of the Lord. We've got right. to be growing in the knowledge of God. Mm-hmm. And without that, then we're just going to be taken. Whoa. And that's why these these places that compromise uh, easy believism and yeah, merging yeah. things with the world is not the answer. <laughs> not the answer for well, uh, an abundant it's, it's life. Like, it's like having a substitute food that has no calories or nutrition to it. It's like. Uh, Having exactly. manna that's basically dead, uh, and that's the problem really is, that's you see, good. that's one part of the reason why we have pain syndromes and drug addiction and people suiciding, and we see a lot of young people now thinking they want social communism. They're hopeless. They grew up in a hopeless society where seventy-eight percent of Americans claim to be Christians, but their churches are dead. I believe that we are in the midst of the great apostasy. It's very subtle, but the great apostasy is all around us now, isn't it? Well, it's been happening since the time Jesus left. There's of been course, apostasy, but, it's, it's coming but, to a, but now it's, it's coming to a culmination it now. Excel- yeah. It's accelerating. I agree oh, with yeah. that. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. It's, you it's, can it's, see it all around you. Like, I mean, it's just... It's, it's like a boil ready to burst or an abscess ready to pop right in your abdomen and pus all over the floor. It's that bad. I mean, people don't understand it. And then when you try to confront sure. people, they get ag- aggravated that you don't agree with them because you try to save the planet. And then if you're a scientist like me, you know what they're saying is not even scientifically valid because Lord God said in 11, Revelation 11, 18, I shall return to destroy those. Bill, I lost you. Hello? Yeah. Oh, okay, really? Uh, let's see. Well, let's connect you again. So come on, connect me again because you can't hear me. Is there I can hear you now. They're not interested in saving the uh, the the planet or the ecosystem. They're interested in demonically energizing mass murder of the human population, murdering the un- unborn, and destroying the ecosystem and collapsing the the biosphere. And the thing is, you see, God is a science is the master of all science. He created everything. So those who are believers have actually a clean mind, so we can actually do proper. Uh, developing of technologies that can help us to survive and help our planets to survive whatever it's going through. But these non-believers are going to be filled with their own self-important foolishness that's demonically energized. And actually, the planning of the planet, if you actually read their own documents, it's like, these people are nuts. They're not even scientifically valid, let alone demonically energized. And the, the thing the that I find... for us is... Yeah, go ahead. The key, I think... Uh, in light of all, you know, we can look at the outer court, and it, it's, right. it's a it is it's a pit for sure, and that yeah. that should be obvious to all of God's people. Right. The issue now for us is, are we going to be able to stand against the evil day? And because this is the evil day, the Ponero. Oh yeah, we're, we're, the in, we're in the Ponero, culmination. Yeah. It's not just Caco Seanos, it's Ponero Seanos. So the difference between the two words is is. Poneros means cancerous. In other words, it's malignant. Uh, right. Cacos is just a, kind of like a boil on your face. It looks bad. It's not a, a boil on your face evil. It's a it's cancer, and and it's going to continue to get worse. Yeah. So the question oh. is, what is it going to take to stand against this day? And the answer is, we must hear the voice of God. We must. Right. 
Otherwise, we won't be able to stand. So one of the things that happens for us as priests, and I know we only have a few minutes left. Yeah, we've got about three or four. Ability, the, the ability to go into the heavenly tabernacle by faith, by, by just going there, visualizing it, getting an right. idea of what it looks like. And when you pray, and get on your knees and pray and see yourself there and see yourself before the throne where Jesus is. And there's a rainbow around the throne and there's... There's uh, uh, myriads of angels and 24 elders and four living creatures. Uh, we have the capacity to get into a, uh, a sympathetic resonance, resonance with uh, the throne of God in such a way that everything that happens becomes now that which we can appraise spiritually. The spiritual right. man appraises all things, and he is right. appraised by no man. So this is where we have to get. And, and by being people of the throne, because Jesus made it available, uh, we can get into this uh, resonance well, where we can see with the eyes of God, and we, we can actually prescribe healings, uh, sound healings. And that's what those harps are in the hands of the, the, the exactly. living. Before, uh, well, Carl Carla elders. Gallops uh, mentioned this a few months ago that the Nios is us. We're the temple. And when we actually pray in the way you're talking about, we become the temple of God and have access to the Creator, right? Yes. And, and, and God's not opposed to giving us the authority and power to do that. I mean, He wants to do that. He but wants he to transfer it, that but yeah, that makes sense. Until we, until we grow to a place where He can trust us with those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So, because we'll take it and 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 use it for self uh, aggrandizement, uh, you know, put ourselves up on a pedestal, yeah, exactly. and he can't like, trust us with that kind of authority and power when we're well, too immature and still babes. We well, can't, God is jealous can't. of His glory. He does not want to share glory. He wants to reflect glory on us if we do His will. But He doesn't he, share. Glory. He actually, He won't share it, but He, in the sense that, uh, uh, how how can I say this? that his glory belongs to us but right. he won't share his glory if we're if we're still infants he won't exactly. do that yeah. he, he, it would be destructive for him to do so, that so right. he has to wait on us to die well, he has to wait uh, on us to die out i think that the population of earth is getting desperate enough they're starting to seek one of the things that i got in prayer many years ago was that just like the, the sayings that somehow the day will come when the population will pull on the prayer shawl of the priest and the tzitzi and cry out, what is next and where shall I enter the relationship with the Most High God? Because right now, to what I can say, the vast majority of people seeking religion of all kinds, whether it's Islam or Judaism or astrology or whatever, they're, they're seeking a substitute for what God wants to give. And God is basically, and they're now desperate. People are getting more desperate, aren't they? It seems people are becoming more desperate and more panic-stricken. Yeah. And that's where we come in. We come in to help people see the Lord, because only He ultimately can help anybody. Exactly. And it gives them, then they have faith afterwards. Then they get faith. And it doesn't come from us, it comes from the Creator. Thank you, Ken. Amazing discussion. We'll see you again soon, I think, in the early November. We are back tomorrow with another amazing show with Mark Gaffney. We're talking about the uh, crustal slip of the earth in the North Pole. John W. Spring, you don't want to miss it. Thank you and support Nutramedical with all of our nutraceutical needs. Which is most appropriate.